Lloydy, good morning to you on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Jim Ole, much like Fergie, needs the one trophy to kick it all off. Remember, Fergie struggled initially. If he wins tonight, I expect your line when you come on here in the morning to be, and Solskjaer has won it, United. Hated, adored, but never ignored. I like that, Lloydy. Uh, there, there is Louis... Uh, Simon Jordan getting rinsed by Trevor Sinclair on uh, Talk Sport about Manchester United, and he just can't take it. Can't. Can you not take it? Are you no. struggling this morning? I am struggling, yeah. Okay. Uh, and there's one. That, that, that's an interesting one, Trevor. I've just stumbled upon it. Uh, this is Summers. Summers is saying, first time today I've realised after being a massive fan of Simon Jordan on Talk <laughs> I knew Sport, you were going to read that one. <laughs> that, <laughs> that he's actually a massive fraud. <laughs> happy he is. The amount of Look times happy. he's changed the, the goalpost regarding Ole is now embarrassing. <laughs> the guy can never admit that he's wrong. See what a treacherous hound he is. He yeah. says to me off the air, yeah. I've got your back, I'm always yeah. behind you. Rely on me. Oh, I know. yeah. You rely on Tone me. Code. I shouldn't really do it, but I will. Hashtag clown. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we're going to take some calls uh, from 11 o'clock. Stay, stay with us on that. Mr. Jordan, is, I think, you turning to a large degree on uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You, secretly, you want United to win, incidentally, Of course don't you? I do. Yeah. They're an English club. Yeah. Owned by Americans. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Trevor, this morning um, we are hearing that this indeed is not fake news uh, and it could well be that Roberto Martinez finds himself in uh, front of the Tottenham hierarchy sooner than later to answer a few questions so is it the case that Martinez is the man in pole position to take over from uh, the sacked Jose Mourinho at Tottenham um, Trevor in, from your point of view you know Roberto I've known him for yeah. years so does Simon would that appointment suggest a clear sense of direction from Levy well I think so I think it, for me, um, he's an experienced manager. He's done it domestically and he's now doing it for the Belgium national team. I think you look at his experience and he, he plays a, a, an attractive style of football. I think he's um, the fact that he's been doing international football means he's been to different leagues, been to different regions. He's got different networking for his scouting. And I think it could be, it could be, um, yeah, it could be something that works out for Tottenham. So you give it the green light, you would give it the thumbs up. If well, you're a Tottenham fan, yeah, give them a go. I, I think they need an experienced manager. You know, I don't, I don't think they need one of these managers who wears bright jackets and has done it for a couple of seasons and is all, all of a sudden the next big thing. I think they need someone who's been in the game for a long time, who's got the experience to lean back on, got the people around him to back him up, can point him in the right directions, great networking for sourcing, for scouting, because they need a lot of players. They need two centre-halves, they need a right-back, they really need to show it up at the back, they probably need a goalkeeper as well, and then they need to improve the squad in general. All this coming, Simon, on a morning over in Italy that we hear, <clears throat> you know, it might well just be that Antonio Conte isn't as happy as we're all told he is. He's uh, never happy. Milan. But he's never happy. And maybe Antonio he? Conte wants a return to the Premier League. If, you, if you're leaving, you've got the choice of getting Conte or Martinez. Who do you go for? Um, neither, quite frankly, for different reasons. I think uh, Conte is a handful and I don't think Daniel Levy could cope with him. I think he goes, wherever he goes, he's never happy with what he's got. Is that not a good thing, though? It's a good thing if there's a limit to it. It's a bad thing if you just push, 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 push and push until you destroy everything around you. Now, of course, they've won the league and, he's had, and it, you do want a manager to push you and to keep on pushing you. He was they, very impressive when he won the league at and he's been And he was very impressive at, uh, very, impre yeah, he was very, impressive, very impressive at Chelsea. He's very, been very impressive at Inter Milan. But he always leaves a trail of carnage and ill feeling. So if I'm Daniel Levy, I'm thinking... Knowing my personality as Daniel and knowing that I'm not going to release the purse strings, knowing I'm not going to do precisely what Antonio Conte wants me to do, I'm already looking at a potential problem further down mm. the line. I look at Roberto Martinez, wonderful. He picked up a great Swansea team from Brendan Rodgers and kept them going on the right direction. Yeah. Right? He did okay in other jobs, but he went to Everton. Mourinho has a 52% win rate at Tottenham. He has a 42% win rate at Everton. Everton fans at the end of it were getting a bit fed up with him. Yeah. Um, Belgium were reputed to be the best team in world football with all the stars they've got. I don't think he's pulled up many trees there besides doing what he should be doing. With the greatest respect to a very nice football manager, what is it about that appointment that tells you that Roberto Martinez is going to do for Tottenham what others have yet to do, which is give them something to hold on to? So which why is would Levy be wanting to talk to him, do you think? Because maybe, uh, maybe 
Martinez represents a very polished individual. Maybe he represents a very manageable individual because he's not controversial. I think that's the one. <clears throat> he's not very difficult to contend with. Mm. He's a very personable individual and he might be more manipulatable. Maybe his time at Belgium's coming to an end and he wants to get back in club career and Tottenham is a very nice place for him to land yeah. for his credentials. So he's going to be a little bit more grateful than perhaps Antoni- Antonio Conte's of the world that are going to come in with a list as long as the Magna Carta about what you can do for him. But I'm sure, said I'm that, sure. Conte would be a statement manager, wouldn't he? Yes, a he statement would. statement appointment. But, you, but it'd but, be hard work. But it would be, um, I think that would be a marriage made in hell because I think it but, would just be a precursor to a problem. We all sat here and said, how can Levy... And Jose Mourinho get on, right? And it looked all right for about five minutes. And now it looks like what it looked like, right? It was a problem. Someone got taken out. Somebody got taken out before a cup final. That doesn't tell you everything that was happy in the back garden, does it? No. no. And it, is that not because the way football is at the moment, we were speaking about it before, not a lot of money going around in the game because yeah. of COVID, because of players' wages, which we've, mm. we all agree on. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you get Conte, he's going to want to spend a lot of money. That yeah. shouldn't be any proper football clubs principles and model at the moment mm. should it it shouldn't be oh wind your neck in it your football be. club has been built upon spending inordinate amounts of money so how dare you behave sit yourself why does it always have to come back round to Manchester this, City this time last year you'd have been set out advocating Lionel Messi going to Barcelona for whatever they wanted him to go for you'll be sitting in the same breath saying Man City have got to sign Harry Kane for whatever they want to pay for him I've How not can said you that say at that? all. I've oh, not said Trevor. that at all. I've said Trevor. Manchester City don't break Jim, transfer records. Jim, weigh in records. any time you feel like. Manchester City I don't break... Trevor, I think you just put your head in the noose with that one. I, I've, I've already said it. Manchester City do not break transfer records. They might sign in one, aggregate, big, they do. one big player a year. In aggregate, they one do. One big player a year. We've had this discussion before. And it's not, not, it's not over £60, £70 million. Pounds. They don't, they don't buy it. £150 million pound players. You're right. They just buy £10, £60 million pound players. The recruit, yeah, over years. Over, over a lot a few of years. years. And because they're so successful, all of a sudden over they're still a in the few team. Years. But it's a consistent spend pattern of a... Di- and there's nothing wrong with that. And I don't have a problem with it. But you cannot sit there in all seriousness and suggest that the model that's going to be brought forward is one that's morally wrong while you sit there forever and a day... I've said this many times, City. Simon. I've said this many times. Is that look, fair? Look at what David Moyes has done at West Ham. We're not talking about David no, no, Moyes. I was, we're talking about clubs spending money they haven't got, they shouldn't do it. Because it can be done by doing it properly, by oh, getting your recruitment properly, looking at different areas. And now look, I think, you look at but what's none going of them have got 150 mil. Trev, they can all buy Manchester it on the drip. C- can't I've they? already said Manchester City won't buy it for 150 but, but million. Can, but they can all buy it on the drip, can't they? So if you, because if you if you buy a player of 150 million quid, you pay him over four years. But, you can afford to but do Simon, it. Simon, right? you're trying you to say that I said it. that Manchester City were going to buy Messi. They weren't going to buy him. They were no, going to get him for free. No, no, or Manchester no, no, City were going to buy Trevor, Harry, Harry Kane. Trevor, with, they weren't with do respect, that. they weren't going to get him for free. They were going to get him for 50 million pound a year wages. Move the free bit out of your head. On this occasion, I think Trevor swinging the conversation around to Manchester City, I don't think was the best move. It wasn't my move. He was the one who brought it up. <laughs> that is true, Jim. <laughs> Keep up, right? <laughs> okay, um, we're going to take some calls. The other, if you dare to join us this morning, <laughs> you're more than welcome, and we'd love you to. On Gareth Southgate and England, what does progress look like uh, for Southgate and his uh, England players this summer? Simon says winning the thing. There's progress. Trevor is saying. You're saying the semi-final, semi-final stage? Semi-final is sustaining what they've done. A la World Cup against Croatia? Yeah. All right, all right. You go with that. But an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Oh, boy. Simon, you want United to win tonight. Trevor wants United to I win do. tonight. But on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, will victory tonight at last see off many of the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer doubters of whom you are the principal lead, Mr. Jordan, and you admitted that. Nuance you, it, please, you hound. You admitted I'm a, I'm, that. I'm a, I'm a doubter of his ultimate ability to win the Premier League. Please nuance it. That, that's a kind of best insult you can get, though, isn't it? If you're going to be insulted, it may as well be nuance it, you hound. <laughs> um, uh, all right, 08717-22344-81089. Incidentally, on Ole, Simon, you're, <laughs> you're being well backed. Oh, Simon is 100% right. I'm getting text messages. I can't reveal the name but it's a prominent pundit on Sky Sports that's all I'm saying <laughs> it's 11 o'clock is this just a thing